What up, Smart Rapper? Today we're going over recording tips, and I've recorded hundreds and hundreds of songs, written thousands of songs, Whoa. and I did 99.9% .9 of it from my home studio, Mick, uh, did everything myself, so like I know a lot about recording, what's gonna sound good, what's not gonna sound good. So today we're gonna talk about the four best tips for recording rap vocals. These tips will actually work for any type of music, but I'm specifying rap because this is Smart Rapper. So stick around, whether or not you do rap, you may do pop, whatever, I'm gonna give you the tips. I'm Rob Level, this is SmartRapper.com, and you're about to get smarter and sound better on the mic intro. right after the intro. Alright, Smart Rapper Gang, in case you're wondering what kind of microphone this is, just so you know, um, this is a Manly Reference mic. This is $3,000. What? And, um, I mean, not, it's not about money. I'm just telling you, like, see if you know, want to know what it is. It's this, and then I have a whole bunch of other gear. I'm going to make a video on my whole home studio setup. I'm also going to do microphone comparisons from $40 microphones versus a $5,000 microphone setup because it's the preamp and everything else. Um, also, a $900 microphone versus a $5,000 setup and stuff like that. It's going to be really cool to so stick around. Those are going to be on the channel make sure that you subscribe but here we're gonna go into these tips all right let's get into it number one as far as recording your rap vocals this is very important it is something that you probably already realized but because it's something that is a must know I want you to understand this is that when you're recording rap vocals you don't want to be on top of the microphone okay number one it's potentially going to damage your microphone number two you're gonna get a lot of plosives <laughs> Explosives, oh you know what I'm saying? It's gonna, it's gonna really gonna cause a lot of distortion, and you can't take that out in post. Post meaning when you're going afterwards, post of it, like post workout. You cannot take that out when you're mixing it. So you want to make sure that your distance from the microphone is typically this, okay? And everybody has different size hands, right? So a girl's gonna be like this far, but <laughs> if you're a guy or whatever, it's usually this. So do like this, do Taylor Gang, hi, like whatever, right? Do this. And this is how far you want to be. It's typically six to eight inches from the microphone itself, okay? Right? And the pop filter can go in between that. That's a good even distance for you to get a good recording without causing plosives. It's going to be quality. You're not going to be so far where uh, a lot of the vocal is going to be affected by the reverb. If I'm back here, even from the sound, the same amount of noise, I'm not as loud because of the distance to the microphone. And also it catches more reverb in it that would be caught when you put gain in or when you build, bring up the loudness. So if my vocal was sitting here and I brought the loudness, you would also hear more of the reverb. As opposed to when I'm this distance and I'm closer to it, right? It's just, just trust me on that, okay? Number two, and this is something that took me a long time to understand. That's why I really wanted to make this video so you guys have these tips like this, is that some people think that you have to stand when you record. Okay, and some people think that, you know, they just don't know what it is or like what's the right way to do it. Well, number two is this, you can sit or you can stand when you record. And the real answer to what is right for you is where do you feel more comfortable? Which one are you more comfortable doing? Because at the end of the day, the take that you get on the microphone is what matters. The person who hears it doesn't know if you were sitting or standing. Now, there are some things that go along with this. If you are a singer, you do need to be able to use your diaphragm more. So when you're standing, you have, there's more, there's more room for you to be able to use that. Or you can sit and sing, but you know, you just make sure you sit up straight, get a little bit of that the, your ability to use your diaphragm in there. But for rappers, you know, it helps with breathing too if you're standing more. But me, personally, and I know a lot of people that do this too, uh, Buster Rhymes being one of them, he typically, as far to my knowledge, he sits. Um, but you sit, I, I sit, and I sit like this, and I have, all, I have all this, and I can record anything just like that, I'm the most comfortable. Just comes down to what are you the most comfortable doing. I feel like when you're standing, you're using a, little, a bit more energy than is necessary. All my energy comes out of here and out of here, not anywhere into my legs, right? So like logically, that makes sense. So whatever you're comfortable doing, you wanna stand, that's fine. I also feel like I'm, I have faster access to anything that I'm recording uh, because I'm sitting. If I'm standing, I gotta reach down, right? I gotta do like this, I gotta do like this. I don't wanna do that, I wanna be able to do this. Hit record, boom, right? So, sitting or standing, which one are you more comfortable doing? That's all that matters. Number three, and this is an amazing tip that I didn't really know for a long time, but this will actually increase your confidence automatically while making an entire song. And that tip is for you to preset all of your plugins on the tracks that you're gonna be listening back to your, to your stuff on. And let me give you a great example. Which is hard. 
We'll cut all that out, huh? Now, see, here's the thing, right? If your track is already set up, the compressor's on it, you have the limiter on it, you have the EQ already perfectly set, when you record something and you set it onto that track, it already pops for you, right? So a great example here would be, I'll just play this real quick. It's just, this is like a random freestyle thing that I had here. But if I take off all of the effects on this, right? If I take off everything, every single thing, you hear how flat this sounds, right? Watch. I never have a shook, shook, shook. It's so flat. I ain't never have a shook, shook, shook. I don't play it by the book, book, book. It right? It's so flat. Now watch this. Watch when I turn everything on. I ain't never have a shook, shook, shook. I don't play it by the book, book, book. Right? So here's the thing. When you have the effects on it already, there's like a massive difference. It already sounds clean. It already has everything set so it matches the track. So when you record a track and you come, come down to listening to that track, it already sounds better and you're more confident in recording your next take. You're like, oh, this sounds good. But if I were to have to keep listening back to it, let's go it again. Let me turn off all the, the settings on the track. If I had to go back and listen to this flat, I ain't never ever shook, shook, shook. There's no compression. Book, book. One more time. I ain't never ever shook, shook, shook. I don't play it by the book, book, book. It's so flat, but this is just sassy right here. What? I ain't never ever shook, shook, shook. I don't play it by the book, book, book. It's, it's, it's cleaner. I know you may not be able to hear it as well through uh, the microphone on this, but it sounds, it sounds completely different. And here, when you preset those things, maybe your auto tune or your Melodyne or whatever else you want to have on that track, that just as soon as you record, you're like, ooh, I like that. I can hear this being something more. Those presets, having those things on the track is massive. And you going from starting a song to finishing a song. If you did a whole song without having the presets on there, your confidence levels are going to be a lot lower because this is like having a premix to a song. It's like your song already being premixed before you even finish it. So you already have a feeling for what it's going to sound like. And if you're asking how do you do this, well, it's simple. This is basically a template. But the first time, a template meaning it's already preset, I already have my plugins on it. Um, like I have my waves plugins and everything like that. So I already know that I have an equalizer, I have a compressor, I have a limiter, I have a, a basic reverb on it, and I have a, a basic echo on it. Okay, so with those automatically set, the first time I record a track, I put it onto the track, and then all I have to do is make some slight adjustments, maybe push up the compressor, I pull down on the limiter, I set the, I set the cap, I set the, the everything up just the way that it really needs to be, so that as soon as I record any other track, as soon as I play it back, I already know it's gonna sound fantastic. And if it doesn't sound fantastic, then I record something else. But now you know, that's a major tip. Preset your stuff up so that you are gonna get from A to Z on a song faster and wanna finish it. That's a great tip for that. I've never actually told anybody that in this channel, but yeah, let's move on. And number four for the best tips for recording vocals is that the takes that you get that are going to be the best takes are the takes when you're in the zone and you really just are not thinking or worrying about it or overthinking it or overdoing it, you're just doing it. You just do it and it pours out of you. When you overdo it, you can hear it. When you underdo it, you can hear it, there's lack of confidence. Like anything except for just doing it, sounds like you're just doing it. It's similar to like when somebody's an actor. If you're an actor and you can see that they're acting, you don't like it because they're not acting, not playing the part, they're overacting and it comes out as overacting. And you are acting when you're on a microphone. But if you just naturally deliver it, like you don't care, like that's just really who you are and that was the line you were gonna say as natural or on a song, it's natural and it sounds natural and it's just way better. So that's one major thing you gotta think. Don't overthink when you're gonna do it. Be prepared, maybe memorize your lyrics or at least have the flow down and then read your lyrics off your phone or the paper and then just deliver it. It, okay, and lastly, in the same area of this is remember, and this is part of the don't overthink it, and this will help you not overthink it. Is you can do as many takes as you want, my friend. Nobody hears the 500 mess up takes you do. They only hear the final one that you decide to release to the public. No one knows how many takes you're doing of these songs. No one knows and honestly no one cares because all they care about is that last end product. So don't stress yourself with thinking, I gotta do this right the first time or the second or the fifth. Sometimes it takes 50 tries. Sometimes you get it on the first take. Sometimes, but don't stress about it. Just do it, go with the flow and naturally record it. Don't overthink. You got this. That the, I hope these tips really help you guys because these are really good tips. So let's go back over them again really quick. Number one, the distance to the microphone. Remember, right here, okay? That's the distance. That's, the, that's a good distance, okay? Right? Number two, you can sit or you can stand, okay? Where are you the most comfortable? Because that's gonna help you get that vibe and that not overthinking part that helps you deliver the best because you're in the most comfortable way that you are. If you're standing and you're not comfortable, then sit the fuck down. If you're sitting down and you're not comfortable, stand up. Okay. It's that simple. 
Number three, probably my favorite tip, is to preset those settings on the track because those are going to help you want to keep working on the song because you're like, I already know how this sounds. I already kind of pre-mixed it. It already sounds fantastic. And if you don't know what those things are, again, I'm gonna tell you the equalizer, compressor, and a limiter are the basic things. You don't have to have the reverb. You don't have to have the echo. The reverb will help it set up, it sound a little bit better though because reverb, adding reverb to stuff, always sounds a little bit better. And I mean, I just watched a video with Metro Boomin saying that yesterday. I mean, adding reverb always spices something up a little bit. So a little bit of reverb on it, okay? And you got it, it's gonna sound good. Do a little pre-mix, then every time you drag a track to it, it's gonna sound good, you're gonna get through the song. Let's move on. Number four, you're gonna get the best takes when you're not overthinking it, when you just do it. Just do it, just let it go, don't overthink, just don't worry, just do it, you're gonna get the best takes. And now for today's word of the day, today's word of the day is, let me play it for you. Instoration. 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 I like doing that because that helps it embed it in my mind as well. And it is restoration after decay, lapse, or dilapidation. And uh, definition number two is an act of instituting or establishing something. Okay? So, a great way to put this in a sentence. He seemed at length to have made satisfactory progress towards the realization of his cherished aims. The method essential for his instoration was partially completed. And he had, to, and he had attained as high a rank as he had ever contemplated. Okay, so here's the thing is that it's pretty much like um, it's like restoration, but it's installation. I feel like this is what it is when it's inside of an institution of some form. So installation is a pretty solid word. Let's go to these other de definitions. Renovation, restoration, the institution or establishment of something and it's a noun, person, place, or a thing. So it is a thing. There's a word for the day, all right, y'all? You just became a smart rapper. I'm Rob Lovell, this is smartrapper.com. Hit me with a subscribe and hit that little bell so you can become part of the Smart Rapper Notification Gang. I release a video every single day so you can become a smarter rapper. And hey, wait a second here though, check this out. I have the free a &R list, which means every a and in the music industry, all these record labels, the addresses, the email addresses, I have that 100% free for you. If you want to go ahead and sign up below, I'll put the link for you guys. It's going to send it right to your email. As soon as you confirm, it sends it to you. Bam, it's yours, free 100% just for being on my email list, okay? Go ahead and hit me with a like and hit me with a, uh, hit me with a comment. Let me see your four bars of the day. And or also ask me what kind of questions do you want? What, what kind of stuff do you want to see more of? What do you want help with? Where do you feel like you're missing things that I can potentially help you with? Let me know when I can make those videos, all right? I appreciate y'all. Go ahead and check out these videos. Make sure you subscribe. My other channel too, almost 100,000 subscribers. This channel is absolutely killing it. We're gaining, gaining five to 10,000 subscribers a month. Thanks to people like you. I appreciate y'all, Smart Rapper Gang, Smart Rapper Family, Smart Rapper This, Smart Rapper That. We're killing this shit. That's all that really matters. Check out these videos. I'm gonna see y'all tomorrow with another video. Make sure that you hit that notification button.